Thank you all for coming out. I, I think we're here as a testament to Paula's principle of what what a civilian can do, uh, starting with just listening. Neither Kathleen nor I have military background. We don't have any particular training. In our classes and with some um, other colleagues, we started getting essays from these men and women about that were just so powerful about their experience that we as human beings, never mind as teachers, didn't know what to, what to do and had to train ourselves. So I, I think even though we're a school, our, our, what we've learned that we offer today is that we listen to veterans, we ask what they need when they tell us, we act, and we're not shy about asking for help wherever we can get it. Um, Paula asked me to mention quickly, uh, I write a column about this and each year I do a survey of veterans at so-called highly selective elite schools and it's been a pretty disgraceful situation. Um, if you take the Ivy Leagues and the fancy schools in their own self-described group, this year they have 228 asterisk veter undergraduate veterans in total. The reason for the asterisk is that some of them don't even know how many veterans they've got. <clears throat> um, the, again, Bunker Hill Community College, 450. So in terms of the, the gap that we were just talking about, that's pretty good evidence of the gap in understanding and, and in war literacy. Um, because we're here at Harvard, our host is part of reporting that story this year. I was at the ceremony that Colonel Carter mentioned and, and uh, heard Drew Faust. And uh, I'm an English major and an English teacher and I love symbolism and Harvard pulled out all the symbolism stops this year and had an orientation for veterans. And Drew Faust gave a talk where she said it's time for us to honor at Harvard for us to honor uh, military service the same way we honor public service in general, and you heard it here. I predict that she turned the corner on, on this in the elite colleges. Uh, Rick Levin of Yale still refuses to discuss this, and Princeton isn't very good, and it, we've got a long way to go, but that's that. Um, we, we had about 400, 100 veterans a few years ago at Bunker Hill. Now there's 450 and we have kind of a problem that we're, we're surprised at is that we can't get them to transfer to four-year colleges because they don't want to leave. They can't find a college um, that, that uh, treats veterans as well as we do at Bunker Hill. So while we're proud of that, things are getting a little crowded. Bunker Hill has always had a veterans representative, but we found he needed some help. So Kathleen and I gathered our colleagues and we started meeting once a week saying, what can we do? And Kathleen will talk about her veteran seminar in the veteran center we created. I found that there was nothing to say about teachers who, um, who, who have veterans in their class. So I did some research, wrote an article about it. As far as I know, it's still the only one. We read Odysseus in America with Jonathan Shea. Some of the veterans read Tim O'Brien's book and asked if Tim O'Brien could visit. We lucked out. He was coming to Boston anyway and fit Bunker Hill into his trip and we created a veterans event, um, a veterans event for the campus. Uh, Harvard gave us 30 tickets the other day to, for Sebastian Younger, the author of War and the producer of Restrepo. Uh, to go hear him speak in Sanders Theater. We gave them out. A, a veteran came back to my class and he said he had taken his wife and this was the first time he and his wife had had, had a context in which they could discuss what he'd been through. Um, in the class this morning, another veteran just led a discussion about what he'd done with his, with his classmates as a result of this. So this is grabbing help. Um, a Harvard professor, Kit Parker, who's a double or, uh, time veteran in uh, Afghanistan, teaches at Harvard. He's brought in all the veterans to argue with them about education and, um, and, uh, and, and talk about what to do. Our, um, we, we have more to talk about, but I think two other points in closing. Um, in the course of all this, Gary Trudeau, author of Doonesbury, sent me a note saying, my character Toggle is about to go to community college. Toggle is a TBI veteran, and what might he um, what might he encounter in community college? So I, I I can't reveal all things in the past, but some of Toggle's experiences that have appeared just might have happened at Bunker Hill Community College. <laughs> and um, next week, Tim O'Brien on Thursday is coming to speak again at one o'clock uh, for Veterans Day, and you're all invited, Kathleen.
just briefly, I'll talk about the course that we put together. Um, we put together a course and the main goal was to give the students a voice. This course is a learning community seminar at Bunker Hill Community College where we put together seminars. This is a really a three credit course to help them to connect to the college. Other students have to take other courses with other themes. Students sign up for this and the title of the course was The Military, Life Before, During and After. And in this course, the whole goal was to connect them to resources, supports, and I had the idea of having them write digital stories. What they had to do is come up with, we had four essays. The first one was, who were you growing up? What's your background? Um, why did you join the military? Tell us something that happened during the military. And where are you going now? What are your goals? What do you plan to do? They wrote these essays, and seeing as it's a three credit course, their final was to do a digital story, and I gave them as much leeway as possible in terms of how to put it together, what to do. They put together these digital stories. If any of you have seen the film The War by Ken Burns, similar to the first part of that, it starts off with who they are, and they could take it whatever way they wanted to do and go whatever way. The stories were phenomenal. These were veterans talking about themselves to other veterans within the class. One veteran said, this is the first time I'm telling my story and I'm sober. They, they said they've never told their stories to other people. This was an opportunity for them to feel comfortable in talking to themselves, and they did. Some of the benefits that came out of this was phenomenal. The connections, we're constantly fighting isolation, which what I think everyone has touched upon today. Isolation is the demon of what they're dealing with. The connections that they were able to make with each other was phenomenal. One student during the course of the class raised his hand and said, you know, my CO told me if he ever found out I told any stories about what happened over there, he would come after me. And as I was trying to grapple with what that meant, another person raised their hand and said, I was told the same thing. And I'm just looking going, where do I go from here? When a brave soul raised his hand and said, you know, my father was in the Vietnam War. My uncle was in the Vietnam War. They both committed suicide. I'm talking. And that was the greatest thing that I'd like to leave you all with. By talking to each other, they're getting out of the isolation. They're connecting with each other. And if we can provide that opportunity, that culture where they can talk to each other in a safe environment, we're doing a world of good. So with your books that you had talked about, with the art programs, with the connections, with the ministries, every one of us today have talked about the community that is so critical. I think we all feel as if we're a community today, and we've only spent a few hours together. So if, we, if I could challenge you all to leave here, call a university, call a college, call your town hall, see what are we providing for our group of veterans that are coming back, because there's going to be so many more. If we're not providing something, we're all acting as advocates. Try and do something. If it's just a phone call, it may be something that will change a life, and that would be a good thing. Thank you for today. Thank you.